So, um, in the last lecture, I had told you that um, if the number of states are finite of a Markov process, then uh, all states cannot be transient, right. We had uh, argued it out that uh, uh, if the system has to go on, then uh, because uh, transient states uh, will be visited only a finite number of times. So, if there are finite number of states, then the process must come to an end in a finite number of time. But since uh, the process has to go on, therefore, uh, if the number of states is finite, then uh, all states cannot be transient. But uh, the argument does not hold when the number of states is infinite. And so, I said I will give you an example that when the number of states are infinite, it is possible that all states of this process may be transient. right? And this is what we want to uh, talk about today. And this is um, uh, so giving you an example when all the states are transient. Okay. Now, a uh, random walk is a, a very uh, interesting and important uh, 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 process. And I hope that after having uh, uh, you know read about it, now you will be able to recognize situations or processes, stochastic processes, which follow uh, as uh, which follow the uh, behavior of a random walk. Okay. So, uh, this is now a Markov chain when the state space consists of the integers i uh, varying from uh, can take the value 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on. So, um, uh, I'm, that means I am numbering the states by minus 1 plus 1 pl uh, plus 2 minus 2 0 and so on. And so, this can go on uh, for um, infinite number the number of states is not finite this is an infinite uh, state situation. Okay. And then the transition probabilities. So, if you go forward that means, if you transition from state i to i plus 1 the probability is p and if you transition from i to i minus 1 that means, if you go backwards the probability is 1 minus p. Okay. And this is for i varying from 0 to plus minus 1 plus. So, therefore, um, the probability remains the same essentially it is going forward the probability is p and if you are um, going backwards then the probability is 1 minus p. Okay for some any p varying between 0 and 1. So, therefore, uh, for different values of p, you will get different random walks. This is the idea. And uh, diagrammatically, if you look at the transition diagram, the transition diagram simply says that. So, this these forward probabilities are p and the backward probabilities are 1 minus p. Okay. So, from minus 1, you can go forward, then it will you will go to state 0 and from 0, if you go backwards, you will go transition to the state minus 1 and the corresponding probability is 1 minus p and therefore, this process can go on on either side. So, this is your transition diagram. Okay. And so, you see that um, from here that uh, all states communicate, right? because uh, uh, from anywhere to you can go anywhere by forward movements. If you want to go from minus 1 to 2, you can go here, then you can again come here and hook. So, any possible path is there, but you can transition from any state to any state. So, all states communicate. Okay. And so, therefore, um, either all states will be recurrent or all states will be transient, because uh, remember uh, the uh, trans, uh, recurrent states will form a class. So, if they form a class, then or within a class all states must communicate with each other, since uh, it is already true that states com all the states communicate. Therefore, uh, the uh, all the states will either be so they are all in one class so they'll either be uh, recurrent or transient okay and um, so here again um, remember um, I had uh, defined for you a recurrent state um, via the um, via the probabilities of first passage pro first passage probabilities and remember we had said that um, if f i is equal to 1, then the state is a recurrent state, because then there is a uh, uh, positive, there is a po the, the, the event that it will recur back to itself is a certain event. right? And if f i is less than 1, then we had said that the state is a transient state. And then um, using an alternate characterization of a recurrent and a transient state, we had also said that if uh, you know, from here, we had said that if p i i um, summation uh, this will be summation p i i n um, n varying from 1 to infinity. If this goes to infinity, then the state i is recurrent 
and if this is less than infinity, then the state i is transient. So, this was another characterization. So, that is what we will use here. And uh, since all states are behaving in exactly the same way, because the probability is the same of going forward or backward. So, it is enough if we consider uh, sigma uh, n varying from 1 to infinity p 0 0 n. So, let me just uh, look at the behavior of this expression. And if uh, this is, uh, I can show that this will be uh, a divergent series, that means it will go to infinity. Then I can conclude that state 0 is recurrent. And since uh, they all the all the states form one single class, therefore, every state is recurrent. And if uh, sigma n varying from 1 to infinity p 0 0 n is less than infinity, then 0 is a transient state, which implies that all states are transient. Okay. So, um, let us now start looking at uh, this uh, expression. Now, uh, for example, if you look at uh, p 0 0 n, that means, this is wanting to know that 0 you starting from 0, you will be back in 0 in n steps. So, um, since you see, you can see from here from the red diagram that you can return back to 0 only in even number of steps, in even number of transitions. right? If I go here, then I can come back here. So, 2. If I go from here and here, and then I need another 2 steps backwards. right? Or if I go from here, and then I go here, back here, and then <coughs> yeah. Okay. Or in fact, you can have any possible numbers of forwards and backwards, but they should be. So, in fact, if, if the number of transitions, if my n is odd, then I cannot come back from 0, if I start from 0. right? So, coming back to itself requires even number of steps. And you can just try to draw number of paths, and you can see that you can go from here, here, then here, then you can come back here, and again here, and then here. So, all possible ways are there, of, uh, but then you will require every time even number of steps. So, therefore, um, if you look at uh, uh, p 0 0 2 n minus 1, then this will always be 0. right? You cannot transition to, uh, back to the state starting from 0, you cannot come back to 0 in odd number of steps. So, those probabilities are 0. And um, uh, for um, coming back even number of steps, then you require exactly n forward transitions and n backward transitions in any order. Right, as I tried to explain from the diagram. So, uh, this will be equal to therefore, uh, from 2 n you choose n forward steps, forward transitions and n backward transitions. So, therefore, the probability p 0 0 2 n will be like this. Right? Choose n from 2 n uh, transitions and then uh, p transitions forward and one uh, uh, and one um, sorry n transitions forward and n transitions backward. So, probability of backward transition is 1 minus p, uh, probability of a forward transition is p okay, and this is 1 minus p. Now, um, just uh, open up the expression here. So, this is 2 n factorial, n factorial, n factorial p raise to n 1 minus p raise to n. I will now use uh, Stirling's approximation, which I have already talked about in my earlier uh, lectures. So, uh, factorial can be uh, approximated by the Stirling's formula. And so, this will be 2 n raise to 2 n plus half e raise to minus 2 n and then under root, oh, we left out the part p raise to n and 1 minus p raise to n. So, this is and therefore, similarly n factorial can also be written by Stirling's uh, approximation formula. So, n raise to n plus half e raise to minus n and then there will be a root 2 pi. So, root 2 pi for both of them. So, therefore, it will be 2 pi n raise to plus half e raise to minus n. Okay. And now, we can cross out a few things. <coughs> this and this gets cancelled out right? and uh, then uh, you can uh, 2 raise to half we can cancel out from here. So, then I will be left with the root 2 pi yeah. and uh, oh, okay. This is root. Uh, so the, uh, root 2 pi was there because this is root 2 pi and this is 2 pi. So root 2 pi was left, and then that root 2 uh, gets cancelled by this root 2 here. Okay, and uh, then you can just see the simplification here. And this is n raised to half, um, and um, so here this is n raised to 2 n that cancels out with this, right? And uh, then there's a n here, and this is n half. So you're left with root n. 
So, this is root n root pi and uh, then you have 2 raised to 2 n which I bring inside here. So, this will be 4 into p 1 minus p raised to n. So, this is the simplification right. After using Stirling's approximation formula for the factorials, I get uh, back. So, we saw that this series can be written approximated by the series n varying from 1 to infinity 4 p 1 minus p raised to n upon root pi n. Now, this I can the terms I can break up as sum of even terms and odd terms and here I though even though I have written the index as n does not matter it is a dummy index. So, here it could have been m also, but uh, the idea is that I am breaking up uh, I am writing p 0 0 n instead of this I am writing the odd I am adding up the odd terms and the even terms. Now, the um, odd terms do not contribute anything to this sum. So, it is only the even part and um, so now let us uh, consider the case when p is equal to 1 by 2. So, in that case uh, this will become equal to uh, 1 right and so the series will reduce to summation and varying from 1 to infinity 1 upon root pi n which we know is a divergent series because um, the power uh, root pi of course, is a constant. So, this will be n raised to half 1 upon n raised to half and we know that this series 1 upon n raised to p n varying from 1 to infinity is divergent for all the values of p less than or equal to 1. So, this we already know. So, therefore, this is a divergent series and therefore, uh, 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 since uh, so the state all the states we will uh, we will immediately conclude that all the states are recurrent because the uh, time to return to this is infinity. So, all states are <coughs> that means, sigma n varying from 1 to infinity p 0 0 n. So, uh, this is recurrent and therefore, all other states are also recurrent. Okay. Now, we have to consider the case when p is not equal to half. So, for p not equal to half your 4 p into 1 minus p will be less than 1. Remember, because for p equal to half this is the maximum uh, this has the, uh, the the maximum value for this term 4 p into 1 minus p is for p equal to half. So, for p less than half it will be less than 1 right and so let me call this term as alpha let me denote it by alpha. Then um, we will show that this series converges and it is simple you just apply the uh, ratio test. So, take the n plus 1 th term divided by the n th term. So, which will be now the n plus 1 th term will be 4 p into 1 minus p raise to n plus 1 under root pi into n plus 1 and here uh, you are dividing by the n th term which is this. So, you have this and so here you see uh, you are left with 4 p into 1 minus p and then this root n I bring in the denominator. So, this will be 1 plus 1 by n raise to half and therefore, the limit of this ratio of the n plus 1 th term uh, and the n th term as n goes to infinity uh, will be uh, you see uh, uh, this will this will go to 1 and therefore, it will just converge to 4 p into 1 minus p which is a number equal to alpha less than 1 whatever the value of p since p is not equal to half this number is will be equal to uh, uh, something less than 1 right. And so, uh, uh, yeah so in that case we will conclude that uh, all states are transient states. Now, uh, of course, I had told you that you can look up for whenever now that you know this random process where it is going backward forward and uh, of course, uh, for the transient case the probability of going forward is different from uh, uh, going backwards and for uh, recurrent states it was uh, both the probabilities are the same. So, now uh, just uh, on the lighter side uh, you know you can uh, you can um, say that if you if there is a drunken man and he is trying to walk on a along a straight line then he will take a step forward then he may take two steps backwards or he may take two steps forward and one step backward or something like this. And so, uh, you know the wanderings of a drunken man you can you can sort of say that the process uh, the uh, the walkings of a drunken man can be modeled as a random walk. Okay. And of course, it will depend on the the p the value of p will depend on um, uh, how drunk he is or something like that. Okay, so that is the uh, that's one of the examples, and then we maybe come we'll come across some more uh, in the process of this course. Or otherwise, you can uh, you know you can now be aware of uh, such a process. Okay, then uh, we'll continue with the uh, classification of the states, and um, after the transient states, there are also uh, states which are periodic and null states, which are uh, both of which are uh, not of uh, much practical use uh, and of course, 
uh, the occurrence is also not uh, that often. So, um, now you see uh, we have talked of, uh, we said that a recurrent state, uh, it is possible that a recurrent state may have infinite mean recurrence time. That is mathematically, uh, this sum may not converge. And remember, uh, for recurrent states, uh, if when we wanted to find out the uh, uh, first passage time and so on, then we uh, did it by finding the mean recurrence time, the Mij's and Mii. Uh, and uh, so, um, when we uh, did this, then we assume that this is a finite, that this series will converge. Okay, but um, um, so, but it is possible mathematically that this series may not converge, even though the series, this of course, this is your uh, uh, condition for a state to be recurrent. That is sigma f i i n, n varying from 1 to infinity, which is equal to sigma, uh, which is equal to f i, that is the uh, recurrence time, probability of, uh, rec of the state coming back to itself, then um, this is equal to 1. So, uh, for recurrent state, uh, this probability has to be 1, because coming back to a recurrent state is a certain event. Okay. So, this series converges, but this series may not converge, which is your mean recurrence time. Okay. And this is such a state uh, we will define as a null state. Okay, so not much is talked about it, and so we will also not spend much time. But uh, we must complete the uh, uh, presentation of the uh, states of the uh, the classification of the uh, various states. And so um, uh, for the for the recurrent states where we assume that this is finite, because then we were solving for Mij's or Mii's, and um, but it is possibility that this series may not converge. Okay. And uh, this as I have already said, these are of real practical use and the probability of being in null state will also go to 0. So, therefore, uh, we will not uh, talk about uh, such states, uh, we will not spend much time on it. But just to uh, complete the discussion, uh, we have also considered the case when this may not converge. Okay. So, this may not be finite. Okay. Now, let us uh, talk about uh, periodic states. So, consider the following transition matrix and the, this is the corresponding uh, transition diagram and you can see immediately from here that uh, from 1 you will either go to 3 or to 4 right? and also from 2 you will go to 3 and to 4 and then again from 3 you may go to 1 or you may go to 2 and from 4 you may go to 1 and from 4 you may go to 2. So, that means, there are two classes you can immediately see, because there is no communication between the states here, uh, between among the states here and the states here. right? So, it is you can just, I should not say classes exactly, because the, these two are not communicating and these two are not communicating, but they are communicating uh, to the, so you, you have communication between the states of this set and this set and vice versa. right? So, uh, your system will alternate, that means at any time either the system will be occupying states 1 and 2 or it will be occupying 3 or 4, right? because once if you start in 1, then you will either be in 3 or 4 and then if you are in 3, then you will either be in 2 or back to 1. right? So, you either communicate this way or you communicate this way. So, your system alternates between these two classes, is that okay? and that you can see by these probabilities also. Okay. Now, um, so let us, uh, in fact, um, you can see from here that suppose I go to, uh, from 1 I go to 3, then I can come back to this. So, that will be in two transitions, I can come back from 1 to itself, right? or I can go from 1 to 3, then I can go from 3 to 2 and then 2 to 4 and then 4 to 1. So, that means, uh, it will be then in ca that case, it will be uh, 4 uh, transitions that will be required to go from, uh, to start from 1 and come back to 1. right? Or And look at the other thing, if you, you may go to, uh, from 1 you may go to 4, then again you can come back. So, again it will be 2 transitions, but if from 1 you go to 4 and then you go to 2, then you will go to 2 to 3 and then 3 to 1. So, it will be, that means, you can uh, uh, recur back to state 1, either in the 2 transitions or in 4 transitions. And the same story is true for uh, state 2, that means, from 2, you can come back to itself either in 2 transitions or in 4. 
and the same again for 3 and 4, right. From 3, you may go to 2 and then come back, right, or you may go to 2 and then you may go to 4, then 4 to 1 and 1 to 3. So, all the states can be visited, revisited either in 2 transitions or 4 transitions, revisited I mean starting from that state you will revisit it either in 2 transitions or in 4 transitions. right? So, you can see that there is a periodicity that and so, let us now make a definition. So, we will say that a state which can occur at time periods m, 2 m, 3 m and so on, where m is some integer greater than 1 is called a periodic state of period m. right? So, therefore, um, using this definition, you can say that all the states of this particular chain are periodic of period 2. Right. A state for which no such m greater than 1 exists is called a periodic. So, if I cannot find. So, here of course, the understanding is that it actually the world should have been a state which can occur at times period m 2 m. So, that means, if you are starting from that particular state and then it occurs again at period m 2 m 3 m then the period is m. So, that part is understood here. right? That means, you are starting from a particular state and then if you can visit it at regular intervals of uh, periods m, m is some integer which is greater than 1, then that uh, state will be periodic. So, in this case of course, uh, what is happening is that uh, your um, all the states are periodic. So, this is one particular example, but of course, you can have uh, a situation where uh, uh, you may have some recurrent states and uh, so, these are also recurrent, but in not in that sense in this see here. Uh, yeah. So, we will just see that uh, uh, there will be no uh, this thing, there will be uh, yeah you can say that uh, this series in fact, uh, the periodic state you already know that the uh, you are going to visit it at a particular time. The probability of vi visiting it at regular intervals is there, it is a positive probability. So, for periodic states, we said that the uh, coming back number of transitions has to be a factor of some integer greater than 1, that means m, 2 m, 3 m and so on. Then we will say that it is a periodic state of period m. Now, of course, on the transition diagram, if you can see that all walks starting from i, walks or paths, whatever we have been saying, starting from i and returning to i are of length m, 2 m and so on where m is greater than 1, then i is a periodic state and the period is m. right? And so, for uh, for the example that we just considered, I showed you that um, any state you start from uh, either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4, you can come back to them in either 2 transitions, 4 transitions, 6 transitions. And so, we concluded that uh, the um, period for each of the states was m. right? Now, if you can find a walk of length 1, that means, if there is a loop for a state, that means you can come back to it in one step or if you can find two walks which have relatively prime lengths. Okay. That means, uh, one step, one uh, walk may be of length m 1 and the other may be of m 2 and they are relatively prime, they have nothing in common. Then uh, again you can conclude immediately that the st uh, state is not periodic, that means it is aperiodic. Right? Because uh, if two, uh, there can be two paths of length that coming starting from that state and coming back to it, either in m1 transitions or m2 transitions, and these are relative, then certainly there cannot be anything common, and so there cannot be a period to that state, right? Or if there's a loop, then certainly uh, um, it is not uh, a, peri a periodic state, right? That's one another way. So we're just trying to look at uh, various ways in which you can uh, characterize a periodic state. And then again, if if it turns out that your uh, mth power, that means the pm transition matrix raised to power m, if this is greater than zero, that means all components are all entries of this matrix are positive for some m. Then no. So actually, it is not difficult to show that if you are given that pm is uh, all components of the matrix pm are positive for some uh, m, then it can be easily shown that your matrix p m plus 1 will also be positive. That means, all entries of uh, the matrix p m plus 1 will be uh, positive. And this you can see immediately from here, see p m plus 1 can be written as p into p m. Uh, now, let alpha denote the um, uh, 
um, okay, let alpha denote the minimum of p i j m greater than 0 and um, then we are saying, yeah. So, because every element of p m is positive, so take the smallest one and that smallest one um, I am denoting by alpha and that will be positive, right. Now, consider the i j th element of p m plus 1. Okay. So, that will be uh, i th row of p multiplied by the j th column of p m, right. And so, this is p i into p j m, right. Now, you see that when you multiply the i th row with the j th column and replace uh, each entry of the j th column by alpha, because uh, all other elements are bigger, right. So, I am writing the smallest possible number for each of the entries of the j th column and then so it will be uh, p i 1 plus p i 2 plus p i n times alpha, because and since the rows add up to 1. So, this will be equal to alpha. So, therefore, uh, the i j th entry of p i j uh, of, of, of the matrix p m plus 1 is greater than or equal to alpha, which is also positive and this holds for any uh, elements i j of uh, p m plus 1. So, therefore, uh, uh, matrix p m plus 1 is also positive. Now, uh, uh, since uh, uh, all the entries of p m are positive, so it seems that it pick up any i, then p i i m is positive. That means, there is a path of length m from state i to i and since p m plus 1 is also a positive matrix, uh, p i i m plus 1 is also positive, which implies that there is a path of length m plus 1 from i to i. And now, by our definition, you see m and m plus 1 uh, for any m integer, uh, positive integer, there are co prime numbers. So, we have shown that there are uh, two paths from i to i of co prime lengths, and hence, by our definition, uh, the uh, state i cannot be periodic. It will be uh, by our definition, it will be aperiodic. So, and since this is true for all i, therefore, uh, no state is periodic. So, the proof was simple. We one, uh, I had asked you to. Uh, do it on your own, but I realize that we can uh, show it right here and figure it out. Okay. Think about it. Now, um, of course, periodicity is a class property as we have shown. That means, you will have a, uh, just as we define that all, all uh, states in that class would be periodic and uh, having the uh, same period. Right. So, we can put together all states which are periodic of the same period. Right. Now, consider this uh, example that we were just we looked at the transition diagram uh, for four states and we saw that every um, uh, this thing yeah okay. Uh, I did not write down I think the probabilities or uh, okay. let us uh, not forget. So, let us see uh, the given that matrix p then you have p square if you now multiply p with itself then you get uh, this matrix right. So, your p was uh, if I uh, yeah in the we just wrote down in the last time we said that uh, uh, one is one is uh, going to three or four. So, there were numbers here one by three two by three and so on. So, you had positive numbers here and you had positive numbers here these were zeros and then uh, so now when you take p square uh, the numbers the non zero numbers shift here and the non zero numbers from here shift here right and each entry becomes half right and then p three when you uh, now take p 3, that means you multiply p 2 with that transition matrix p, then you will get. Uh, so, these entries will shift here and these entries will shift here. So, this is how. So, I am just wanting to uh, through uh, powers of the transition matrix, I am just trying to show you uh, what is happening. And then finally, when you take p 4, uh, the uh, halves will again shift here okay, equal to p square, which you would expect, because every uh, state of the system had uh, period 2. So, therefore, uh, uh, after two iterations of two transitions, uh, this will um, uh, the transition matrix will be the same. So, p 2 will be p 4 will be equal to p 6 and so on. Right? And similarly, uh, p 5 will be equal to p 3 and this is equal to uh, p 3. Uh, yeah, this will not be equal to p that is true. Yeah. Okay. So, p 5 will be p 3 and then all other powers will continue all odd powers will continue to be the same, because then uh, you see uh, p 3 tells you a probability of going from uh, 1 to 3 in 3 steps. So, that is what will happen right. I can it will come back to itself and then go back and so uh, from here uh, it can go to 3 and 4 and again in 3 steps. So, either it happens to see you had 1 here and then you had 3 right and you had 4. So, this was it right. 
then uh, if you come to 3 in one step and then uh, if 3 you cannot go back to it uh, uh, you cannot come back to from 1 to 3 you want to come back in 3 steps. So, you will either go to here or you will go here right to 2 right and then you may come back to 2 3. So, it will take 3 steps to come from 1 to 3. So, starting from 1 if you want to come back to 3 then you will have to require 3 steps because in 2 steps you can either from 1 starting from 1 you can either come back to 1 or to 2. And so, therefore, you will need odd number of steps to go from 1 to 3 or to 4. So, either in 1 step or in 3 steps or 5 steps and so on, because the even transitions are reserved for coming back either to this thing. So, that means, within a class and that is why we said that this is this and this is this. Of course, they all had the same period, but here what we are saying is that you can go from 1 to 3 and then 3 to back or 1 to 4 and 4 to 1 and so on. Okay. So, this is what uh, is happening and so you see that your p i i n. So, if you see here uh, in the first matrix your uh, p i i. Uh, so, p 1 1 1 was 0. Now, it is uh, half then again in th p 3 uh, this number is 0 and similarly all these numbers are 0 and all these numbers here in p 2 are half right and then in p 4 again they are half and in p 5 when you again look at it all the numbers all these p i i's will be 0. So, this limit does not exist right. So, limit p i i n and going to infinity does not exist actually it oscillates between 0 and half. So, therefore, um, uh, and this for the first condition for the, so, so, this series will also not converge this if you want to take the summation. Uh, but anyway, these are not the first step transition probability. So, all we are saying here is that limit p i i n as n goes to infinity does not exist this limit and uh, also. Uh, so, the summation will also not exist this is not the convergent series p i i n n varying from 1 to infinity, but uh, will not be a convergent because the necessary condition for this series to converge is that the nth term must go to 0 as n goes to infinity. So, here if this limit does not exist. So, therefore, I cannot say anything about this series also. Okay. So, now uh, after having looked at all possible states of a Markov process, uh, the conclusion is that you know uh, if the process is ergodic then and of course, finite number of states, then uh, the steady state probabilities can be found by solving system of linear equations as we saw right by solving this matrix uh, matrix equation pi equal to pi p and sigma pi i i varying from 1 to n is 1. So, with this condition because otherwise the solution here is not unique. So, we saw that we when we put this condition we will get a unique solution if your system is ergodic that is a uh, finite number of states and all states are uh, recurring. Okay. Um, and of course, so therefore, this system does not contain any transient periodic or null state. So, this was uh, one convenient way, but then we saw that there were other um, uh, states also. So, for transient and null states probability of being in that state is 0 and so um, uh, and of course, periodic state also do not possess steady state probabilities. Right? So, uh, when we when the when the state possesses a steady state probability then we saw we can solve it by uh, this linear system, uh, linear equations uh, adding this equation to it, but otherwise uh, periodic states as we have seen do not uh, possess steady state probabilities for transient and null states the probability of being in that state uh, is goes to 0 as the process continues for a long time. And so, um, we have finally, uh, uh, sort of uh, completed this argument and said that uh, if when you know that the system is orga or ergodic and so on the uh, finite number then you can uh, solve for steady state probabilities using a system of linear equations. On others we have seen methods how to classify and how to decide that uh, uh, the state is periodic and it is null or transient. Okay. Now, uh, the thing is that um, uh, periodic and null states have uh, are not much of practical use and they do not uh, they are uh, their occurrence is rare. So, we will not talk about them, but uh, transient states you know transient processes are there. That means, there are lot of practical uh, uh, situations where uh, the uh, st the process does not continue for a long time. So, it is uh, um, and therefore, we call them reduced 
Markov processes and so uh, they are transient in the sense that after a while the process comes to an end. And so that uh, we would like to look at in more detail because um, there are situations where your processes are not supposed to continue for uh, forever and so uh, we will define them as reduced Markov processes and we will talk. So, reducible Markov chains one or more absorbing state and a number of transient states, right? because we are saying that uh, the uh, uh, process will not go on, it will terminate after a short period of time. So, therefore, there will be either one or more absorbing states and uh, remaining will be transient states. So, again by our uh, discussion, we have seen that once you reach an absorbing state, you will uh, you will not go out of that state. So, the process will terminate or if you are in a transient state and the number of states are uh, then you will uh, you know uh, you will um, the number of states are finite then uh, again after a finite period of time uh, the process will be over. So, this is what we are talking about. So, an interesting example <coughs> and that is uh, the gambler's ruin problem. Now, the idea is that the gambler at each play of the game has probability p of winning uh, 1 rupee and uh, probability q of losing 1 rupee. So, there is a game and uh, I will tell you why it is called gambler's ruin problem. So, now successive plays of the game, yeah, it should be uh, yeah, y s plays of the game are independent. So, successive plays are independent that means, it does not whatever the outcome of one play the game goes on uh, independent of what has happened and the gambler will quit playing when he wins rupees n. So, he wants to make a fortune of rupees n, he, th he is hoping for that uh, and so he will uh, uh, quit the moment he has earned n rupees. So, we want to find out the probability that starting with rupee, uh, rupees i, suppose he has this much money with him, the gambler's fortune will reach rupees n before reaching 0 and that is what we mean by the ruin. Because if we allow the process to go on, then he will ultimately um, lose all the money and that will be the end of his uh, playing the uh, gambling, because then he cannot bet any more. So, uh, let us look at the transition diagram. So, here what we are saying is that uh, see with 0 he cannot play, because he has no money to bet. So, he this he stays here. Otherwise, if he has rupee 1, then he can either lose that rupee and come back to state 0 or he will win and he will go to with probability p and then he will go to 2. So, that means, he will have 2 rupees. So, the state is described by the amount of money he has and that is how we are using these integers to describe the situation. right? And then of course, again if he has 2 rupees, he bets and he loses that rupee, then he will again revert back to uh, or having rupee 1 and so that will be the state. So, this the diagram and finally, uh, at n minus 1, when he has n minus 1 rupees, he will bet again and he will if he wins, he will um, uh, get n rupees, he will make his fortune. So, we want to compute that and of course, what we are saying is that he will stop playing. So, there is no are going back from here, because he will just quit the game. right? So, this is the whole idea and uh, so this is now if you look at it, this is a uh, you know the duration of the process is finite and um, uh, you can see that this is an absorbing state and you may call this also an absorbing state and all other states are transient right because the moment he has some money with him he'll bet and then he'll either convert he'll either go back to zero for example here he'll either uh, win and he'll go to transient to this uh, transition to this state or he loses and then he transitions here so again this is an absorbing state and he loses the uh, he he just loses all the money and therefore the game is over so this is what we want to talk about and we are show and, the, and of course the whole idea is to compute the probability that um, starting with rupees i the gambler's fortune will re reach rupees n and uh, you can say that uh, here of course um, so, the process here you can immediately see that this is a Markov process because you are transitioning and it just depends on where you are. So, your uh, transitioning to the next state just depends on where you are and it does not matter how you reached 1 or how you reached 2. Uh, it, it just so, uh, you can immediately uh, conclude that this is a Markov process and this is a uh, uh, you know uh, short period duration that means, it will terminate uh, if uh, the gambler ends up with rupees n. Otherwise, of course, uh, uh, 
or if he just loses everything and he is back here. So, starting with the rupees i, we want to find out the probability that uh, he the gambler will reach the fortune that he wants to make. So, the gambler's ruin problem, uh, I have put it as an exercise in exercise 10, which I will be discussing after some time. So, I have uh, after explaining the problem, I have now left it to you to work out the details and let us hope that uh, you enjoy doing it and you are uh, able to compute the probabilities. But uh, while discussing the exercise, I will also give you some hints and try to show you how to go about it. Okay. Thank you.